Hi, my name is Nick Wilson-Jones. I'm a paediatric plastic surgeon from the Welsh Centre for Burns and Plastic Surgery in Wales. And I'm here this morning to talk about uh, scars and their management. I think the risk factors can be separated into those that relate to the patient and those that relate to the injury or the traumatic wound which caused the scar. With the patients, I often find that children's scars do tend to stay active for longer. And I believe that scars that form around puberty or early adolescence can actually stay in that active phase for longer and often need treatment. The second major factor in relation to the patient is their skin type. We all have different skin types, but we know that those with darker skins can form abnormal scars, either hypertrophic scars or chelide scars, more often. There are certain parts of the body as well which are prone to abnormal scarring. Around the shoulder and deltoid area, the chest, the front of the neck and the ears. And therefore, if we have a scar in this area or a wound in this area, I would tend to treat more aggressively here with treatments such as silicon on top of your classical treatments of moisturisation and massage. There are certain issues that relate to the wound themselves, which means a scar may become abnormal or stay in the active phase for longer. And that relates to the depth of the wound, the nature of the injury and how long the wound took to heal. Any wound which has a problem with its wound healing, whether it's after surgery or after an injury, such as an infection, means that it takes longer to heal and more likely to form an abnormal scar. In these circumstances, I would suggest early treatment uh, for the scar to prevent forming abnormal scars and the prolonged immature phase of that scar.